So I already know quite a bit about all of you, because I think the fact that you're here, that we are all here on a Saturday afternoon, says a lot about us. The fact that we're here at a TEDx conference on social change says that we're socially conscious, that we think about our role in society, and that we want to drive a progressive, perhaps even radical social impact within our lives. At the same time, the fact that we're here at Harvard also says that we're smart and we are driven, and if history is any guide, and if we're honest with ourselves, there's a good chance that many of us will end up at large organizations or institutions within the next few years after we graduate. And therein lies the tension, because many of us are used to thinking of social change as something that only happens in small startups and large-scale social movements that happen outside of the system. We tend not to think of large organizations and institutions as places where social change happens, much less originates. But I think it would be a real mistake to discount the potential of large institutions and large organizations as places where social change can happen. I'm talking about places like law firms, like investment banks, like corporations, and like government agencies. Unlocking that potential requires the power of social entrepreneurship, and that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. Social entrepreneurship is not a term that I made up, but I think it's useful in talking about this concept of driving social change within a large system. I'd like to use the term and define the term as bringing the best qualities of an entrepreneur to your organization or institution. So I'm talking about qualities like creativity, innovation, an ability to think outside of the box and connect the dots in a creative way that aligns your organization's incentives and goals with the social change priorities that you're trying to promote. Social entrepreneurship is good for the bottom line, it's good for the brand, and it's good for morale within the organization. Now I'd like to share an experience from, uh, from my work that highlights why I believe social entrepreneurship and change within organizations is not only possible, but it's one of the best ways to drive social impact and one of the most underrated. So uh, as was mentioned, I started my career at an organization called Barclays in an investment bank. And I can tell you quite honestly that working in investment banking was the last place that I ever intended to drive social impact. It just wasn't part of the plan. But in my first year at Barclays, a woman named Cheryl Dorsey came to talk to us uh, about her work at an organization called Echoing Green. For those of you who don't know Cheryl, she is herself a triple Harvard grad, Harvard College, Harvard Med School, and Harvard Kennedy School. And she's the president of Echoing Green, which is an impact investing organization that supports the work of emerging entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, working in 40 countries around the world on some of the most pressing issues facing our world today. I'm talking about issues like poverty alleviation, access to health care, access to education, and gender and racial equity. So I went to Cheryl's talk, snuck away from my desk, as analysts are not supposed to do, in the middle of the workday. And I went down to see her talk, and I was blown away because she was talking about a model of social change where people like me, who are working in the private sector, could take our skills and apply them to the challenges that social entrepreneurs were facing in their organizations. And I found this to be a really effective and profound way of volunteering because there were skills that I had, that I had developed, that were unique to, to a small group of people, that were really highly valued and really needed by these entrepreneurs. So I, I came away, and I signed up for the Social Investment Council at Barclays, which is for an Echo and Green, which is essentially their Young Professionals Network. And I got involved in volunteering and providing financial and business advisory services, and I found that to be fulfilling on an individual level. But it was still just an individual impact. And I came away thinking, OK, Echo and Green has this ecosystem of change agents. It's not just about the social entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. It's about creating resources and, and people who will partner with the entrepreneurs in order to support them and advance the work that they do. And I'm a small note in that network, but Barclays as an organization, as an institution, has a brand, has credibility, has a reputation and resources that they can bring to be a larger note in this network and a powerful supporter and promoter of the work that Echoing Green and their social entrepreneurs are doing. Fortunately, I was not the only person who had this idea. There were other members of the Social Investment Council at Barclays, working at the junior level, who also thought that this was possible and that we should change this. There were people in the community investments team at Barclays who were interested in partnering with Echoing Green on a philanthropy basis, which is very different from the work that we on the junior uh, employee level were doing. 
And there were also a couple of senior guys who were really interested in the work Echoing Green was doing, and again, had limited their impact to an individual one. But we were able to connect those dots, and we were able to grow our team. So by the time I left Barclays, after four years, we had grown to a team of 120 volunteers, from analyst level to managing director level, all of whom donated time and skills to advising Echoing Green social entrepreneurs on the issues that their organizations were facing. Business challenges, developing leadership teams, how to brand themselves, how to reach out to new networks and new populations to help them. Now I share this story for three reasons. Number one, I might never have met Cheryl Dorsey or learned about the work that Echoing Green was doing had I not been at Barclays. Large organizations have a powerful ability to bring people together in very unpredictable ways. Number two, it was my time at Barclays that made me useful and valuable to Echoing Green. Sure, I was passionate about the work that they were doing and deeply committed to the causes that they were trying to advance. But it was my time at Barclays, the skills that I built up, that made me useful to them and their social entrepreneurs and made that a valuable relationship. And number three, this is about as grassroots as you can get in an investment bank. But I actually think that was an asset and not a liability. You laugh, but <coughs> after I and many others who started this relationship within the firm with Echoing Green have left, there's still a relationship there. And I was really excited about a month ago when Echoing Green announced that our global CEO at Barclays, Anthony Jenkins, is actually going to host the Echoing Green annual benefit this year. This would never have happened four years ago. We wouldn't have dreamed that would happen. It's really been institutionalized and taken very seriously by the organization. And I think that really speaks to the fact that what we saw as an opportunity to strike a really unique partnership has been taken very seriously and has really resonated within the organization and its leadership. So with that, I'd like to leave you with some tips because I think this relationship and this example of Barclays and Echoing Green is not unique to investment banks and it's not just about volunteering. It's about driving social change in a way that leverages the assets and resources of whatever organization you find yourselves in. So I'd like to leave you here today thinking about organizations that you may join in the future, not as just something that you work for, but as something that can work for you and the social impact that you're trying to drive. So first tip is find your people. This doesn't just mean find the people who have access to the resources that you need for your initiative, although that's important too. But just as important, perhaps even more important, is finding like-minded, passionate people who share your interests, share your social change drive, and also want to collaborate on the initiatives that you're interested in. Because social change work is hard, no matter where you do it, no matter how many resources you have. And while it can be exhausting and quite frankly, sometimes emotionally draining, you're going to need those people to support and sustain you through that difficult work. Number two, understand the bottom line. At Barclays and at other large corporations, the bottom line is simply a measure of profitability. It's a measure of success. But you have to think about how your organization defines success. So if you're in government, maybe it's the number of votes that you're going to get. If you're at a nonprofit, maybe it's the number of beneficiaries you're reaching. It's also important to think about how the person that you're talking to on an individual basis within the organization defines success in their role and responsibility. And number three, give resources to get resources. When Echoing Green evaluates its social entrepreneurs to decide who they want to invest in, they look for a quality that they call resource magnetism. This just means an ability to attract funds and people and attention to your cause and your organization. But if you're a social intrapreneur, a little bit more challenging because you already have predefined role and responsibilities. So you have to engage in a little bit of negotiation or horse trading in order to get what you want. When we were trying to build out our team of junior volunteers at Barclays, we highlighted not only what they were giving up in terms of time and resources, which are very precious, but also what they would be getting, access to entrepreneurs, expanding their networks, learning about innovative new business models, and a chance to take leadership and drive change on issues that matter to them in a real way. So I hope that you'll go away from this talk, not only remembering these tips for whenever you find yourselves in organizations, but also share them with others and with colleagues and with friends, because this isn't just about one person driving change within one organization. It's really about all of us changing the way we as society think about organizations and institutions and their larger role in social movements. Thank you.